Today we are talking about the most abundant tree in the state of Pennsylvania, where I live, sweet birch, uh, Betula lenta. Um, it has a kind of a bad reputation. Um, usually when sweet birch is brought up, it's kind of in a negative light in forestry circles. We'll kind of talk about that ecology, but in its own right, it's a great tree. Um, so older ones will have a, a very different look than younger ones. Um, they can actually live quite a long time. Again, they have a reputation for being this kind of short-lived tree that can cause trouble in the woods, a lot of interference for regeneration for species like oaks and hickories that we're kind of trying to, you know, regenerate. Um, uh, and it, yeah, it, it, it's typically causing an issue because it is an umbrella of low light. Um, it'll move in to an area really quickly, um, grow very fast, and start to outcompete, uh, start to really suck up a lot of the light that gets to the forest floor. And so that's why it's kind of thought as an issue. But as if it is allowed to, you know, to grow uh, large, it gets to a pretty big size here. Um, and we can see it has this very distinctive bark um, that is uh, these really large plates that are cracked um, and that start to peel away from the tree. But these are super dense uh, and thick plates of bark. Um, you don't really see too much else like that in the woods. Um, and we can even see here, uh, we actually have scarring from lenticel tissues, um, these horizontal uh, stripes across the bark. And we'll look at uh, some younger bark in a second, and you can see uh, that, that, that those lenticels are quite distinctive, um, really throughout the, the life of the tree. We have very distinctive bark, I think. Um, people will call it cherry birch as well because of these very distinctive lenticels and the gray color. Um, most of our cherry species have these very distinct lenticels, but um, sweet birch is a little bit different. Um, doesn't have as heavy of a lenticel uh, density, I'd say, as a lot of our cherries. Um, but, um, and we'll take a look at the buds, but they are very distinctive over cherries as well. Um, but yeah, this is how you'll typically see it, is this kind of mid-story tree um, uh, in our woods. Um, it is a birch, so, you know, I've said this before, our birch leaves, you know, they can often look pretty similar uh, to each other, um, just look like birch leaves to me. Uh, and so we have these very um, finely serrated leaf margins, um, really, really uh, fine serrations, um, this acuminate tip here, um, and then uh, there's a little bit of a pinch uh, towards the base of the tree, slightly cordate, or sorry, uh, the base of the leaf. Uh, slightly cordate leaf there. Um, the buds have these little spurs on them, um, and then there are, uh, they're, they're not quite as long as, say, an American beech bud, um, but they kind of do have that sort of cigar shape a little bit um, and very distinctive scales. But yeah, that spur on the bud is pretty distinctive. Um, the reason it is called sweet birch is because uh, it is sweet. So um, if you take off these buds or any kind of young stem, um, chew it up. Um, it's this kind of wintergreen sort of uh, taste. Um, and actually, that's great. Uh, so birch beer was made out of sweet birch. Um, I, I just learned somewhere recently that uh, the tree was really heavily extracted um, for use for that wintergreen flavor, for oils, for you know creating gum or whatever. If we wanted wintergreen flavor before we could synthesize it, you used sweet birch. Um, so it was actually almost endangered. It was removed, you know, extensively from the landscape for use for that uh, 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 wintergreen flavor, which is interesting. Um, otherwise, as far as uses, especially now that we have, you know, synthetic wintergreen, it's not, you know, a super, super heavily sought after uh, wood. Um, it's a pretty functional wood. Uh, it is used uh, by a lot of mills, but, you know, we don't see as many trees getting this big. You know, when I said it's the most abundant tree in PA, most of that is kind of the smaller, uh, mid-story kind of stems, um, uh, but it, it does have some pretty good qualities for wood. Um, it is somewhat useful, uh, especially in kind of furniture and things like that, uh, once it gets a little bit larger, I think for veneers and things. Um, ecologically, uh, valuable for a lot of species. Um, uh, a decent amount of insects will eat the, the tissue of sweet birch. Um, it produces seeds. Uh, I couldn't find any of the, the catkins, um, which are its you know, reproductive structure uh, today on the, on the forest floor. I see a bunch way high up in the tree, um, but none on the forest floor for us to find. Um, uh, but birds, things like that, will, you know, squirrels will eat the seeds uh, and the buds and the catkins. Um, so that's kind of, you know, uh, some of the ways it's contributing ecologically. Um, so uh, let's talk about this maligned nature um, and the ecological context there. So um, uh, it actually has a pretty similar uh, germination requirements um, and, and early growth uh, as a lot of our oak species. Uh, it needs some light shade or else it's not going to be able to germinate and, um, and regenerate. 
However, um, it is not very shade tolerant at all uh, for kind of mature growth. Um, so what it needs is a little bit of shade and then an opening in the overstory um, uh, to really grow. Um, however, uh, how it's different than those oaks and the hickories uh, in two very important ways. One is uh, tolerance to deer browse. It's not a very preferred deer browse, potentially because of that you know, chemical in here. That's probably why it, over millions of years, produced that chemical uh, to deter er herbivores from chewing on the stems. Um, so they'll chew on oaks instead, and so when there's too many deer, they'll hammer the oaks and the hickories and the cherries even, and they won't really bother the sweet birch as much. They will eat it, but not as much. And so that is how we start to get these conditions where there's a ton of sweet birch in the understory, not that many oaks, if then someone comes in and removes the overstory trees without paying attention to what's growing in the understory and it's all sweet birch, that sweet birch is going to take over. So it's not the sweet birch's fault that it's so abundant uh, and that it's outcompeting the oaks. It's kind of a result of that poor forest management um, or potentially, you know, uh, uh, decades of this management, you know, causing it to increase in the understory before those overstory trees get removed. The other major difference is that it is not tolerant to fire when it's uh, young whereas oaks uh, are quite tolerant to fire. Um, uh, even when they're, they're pretty young, they'll be able to tolerate a low intensity fire pretty well.